V Rising is a vampire survival action RPG adventure game, and I'm going to play 100 days of it. So grab something to eat and join me on this adventure. So let's begin. Alright, day one. I woke up from my coffin. I immediately headed out and combat a skeleton right here. Trying to make use of all the powers I have as a vampire. And got myself some bones while destroying this helpless skeleton. I then crafted myself a bone sword. And look, it looks pretty cool. I tried out how good it would be using a sword against these skeletons. And it's not really bad. It's actually pretty good. There's a wide array of swings and it keeps me safe from a distance. So yeah, slowly I progress and crafted a bunch of stuff like a bone ring, some armor, before I actually head out to the wilderness outside of this area right here. So after exiting what seems to be a cave full of skeletons, we arrive at Far Bane Woods. There were a bunch of trees here and some wolves. The wolves will be a great source of leather. We will need this to complete our armor set. And here, finally a creature with blood. We can feed on it so we can refill our blood pool. We have a 2% creature blood on our vein. Not really good. Also discovered my very first way gate. This is going to be useful in the future. So we can come here anytime we want. Or use this as a travel point to go to places we've unlocked way gates to. So yeah, I farmed some wood and stone. I'm gonna need these resources so we can start building our base. And oh look, our first ever human encounters. These are low level poachers, but they have, uh, you know, rogue blood. I'm not sure if it's good or not. But anyways, we won. And as I went on on my journey, I think I found the perfect spot to place our base. Just above the stair, but there needs to be a lot of cleaning done. There are a bunch of old stone walls, I guess. A bunch of trees. I guess you can call this an abandoned area. But this is gonna be where our base will be stationed. But before actually making the base, there's actually a big bear stationed here. He did quite a big damage. I just need to dodge it right, and I should be able to kill this rather easily. So in order to claim this area as my base, I made a castle heart. And in this castle heart, we'll need to feed it with blood essences we get from killing monsters, humans, and other stuff. That was blood, I guess. And now, this has officially became our base. For now, I just did what the quest wanted me to do. So I can unlock more new recipes to make a bunch of stuff for our new castle. So I made some wooden walls, a wooden coffin, and a mist brazier. A mist brazier is basically something you burn bones into. It will create a mist which covers up from sunlight. Seeing we don't really have a roof right now. So this was very useful. I then made some sawmills. They will process our wood to turn it into lumber, which is needed for better walls and other stations we'll need to craft. And here's one very important thing I made. I made a workbench station. Now we can upgrade our gears and armor. So yeah, after I clean more of the stuff in the base and process some lumber, I was able to upgrade a bunch of my gears like armor and weapons. We are not short of gear level right now and I'm pretty strong now with these gears. Now we have a blood tracking feature. The very first boss or the V-blood we'll need to fight would be the alpha wolf. So I'm gonna be tracking it and going to where it is to fight it. And after a long journey, we have found the Alpha Wolf. And we shall engage it in combat. After emerging victorious from this fight, I have stuck its blood, gaining its abilities it provided. I can now transform myself into a wolf. This will surely provide me with very good movement speed, so I can travel much faster in the game. Since every bosses or places I need to go to are 
kind of far from each other. So I travel around, I seem to find these copper stones. So I keep mining them to get some copper ores while just along the way the forest or something. Upon arriving home, I crafted myself a research desk. But I don't really have any book to learn anything. <laughs> so it's kind of useless right now. But if I get enough paper, I might be able to research something. I also made myself a blood press. I don't really have any use for it right now, but I guess it's good to have. At the very least, I have one. All right, since I have some copper on hand, I could actually make some furnaces so I can process these coppers into bars. So yeah, in the base, I just made some beautifications like adding some floors while waiting for my copper to process. Aside from that, there's really nothing to do. So I'm gonna head out and fight the next V-Blood. Errol the Stonebreaker. Seems he was lurking inside the bandit copper mine. So I'm gonna raid this place, destroying every enemy I see, sucking their blood and slashing their bodies into two. Since this place was rich of copper, I actually mined a bunch of them first before I engage in a fight to the death with the boss. So yeah, Errol is actually just right there. You know, just taking a stroll, wandering, I guess, looking at his slaves mining away. So I engage him in Mortal Kombat. So we'll see who wins. His moveset is pretty simple. He just whacks the ground in chaos a chaotic wave. He also spins sometimes like that. But not something that's hard to dodge at all. Let's hear that crunch! Let's hear the crunch! And after a while of combat, I emerged victorious and extracted his blood. And I learned a new magic called Aftershock. It's the same magic he used when we fought him with. I then went home and processed all the copper ores I have gained on my ventures earlier. I crafted myself a copper axe and look, we have a skill now. It is a wide swing of the two axes and increases my attack speed. It's pretty useful. It's actually really good for chopping wood as well as it increases my attack speed. I also found like a group of merchants here but I don't really have any money to deal with them. So I just left. My next target was Achilles the Frost Archer. I was kinda scared that he might be she might be tough. What she usually does is hide herself somewhere I can't really find her. And then she shoots these arrows. And one of her skills is an AoE like that, which is makes her very hard to approach. But no problem. We did we got this. And we got the third V-Blood, Healy the Frost Archer. We unlock a bunch of stuff, but the most important thing is the leather and the tannery. We can now process our animal hides to leather, and we can get new armor set. So I made no waste, I went home and made the tannery. Now I immediately processed the leathers I had in my inventory. I mean the hides. Once that was done, I crafted a bunch of new copper weapons as well. And once the leather is done, I'm gonna make a new armor set. While waiting for all my materials to process, I cleaned up my base, added more floors so the trees, the grass, and everything else won't respawn anymore. Actually, time to think about putting stone walls now. <laughs> So my castle would look decent and would have a roof. After finally my resources were done processing, I crafted myself a whole set of Night Stalker set and also a copper axe, sword, and a mace. So it was now time to defeat the next V-Blood, Rufus the Foreman. Right, that wasn't that hard. Maybe because I have a new set of items. So with Rufus the Foreman dead, we got Blood Rage and a Woodworking Bench. 
With a woodworking bench, we can make the fishing pole. And also, we have the ability to craft a crossbow now. Let's go. For the next V-Blood, I decided to go for Grayson, the armorer. This battle has a unique mechanic where you need to wear armor to remove those uh, spikes on the ground. Because if we don't do this, the entire battlefield will be covered with this caltrops. So yeah, we're invulnerable to all attacks, including Grayson's attacks. So yeah, after cleaning this up, I will engage battle again. And with that, we have slain Grayson, the armorer. So I returned home since I got a new recipe for a crossbow after defeating Grayson. So I immediately made myself a copper crossbow. And also I have a recipe for a merciless Night Stalker armor. So I slapped it inside of the research, research table and made myself a merciless Night Stalker armor. Alright, since I had the recipe for whetstones, I can now make myself some grinders. And with the grinders, we can make stone blocks. That's game changing right now for our castle. Because with stone blocks, we can make stone walls. Now we can finally, finally make our castle. So I left all the stones I've been farming since the start of the game to the grinder. So after we take care of Gorswine, the Ravager, maybe we can start building the wall in our base. Gorswine is pretty annoying to fight. He keeps spamming like these poisonous circles on the ground. But they're not really that hard to dodge and I can heal it all back by using my healing salve and also my skills. The blood skills basically have a leech effect on them making me life leech. And yeah, look, look, some NPCs are helping me. Basically, the undead and humans are enemies here. No matter what reason, as long as they encounter each other, they will kill each other. And with that, Gorswine is dead. Killing him provided us the ability to craft a Grave Digger Ring. A very good ring eh, to boost our magic attack. As much as I would love to craft it, I don't. I didn't really have any Grave Dust and Morning Lilies. So I need to find those. Right, right. So with the stone blocks being processed by the grinder, I was finally able to make myself some walls. I won't overextend these walls as I don't really have that much stone blocks. So for now, I'm just gonna enclose my base a little bit so that it has a roof. And with that, we now have a roof. We have a castle now. It still looks very bad, but I'll eventually design it to look good. So time for the next V-Blood, which would be Lydia, the Chaos Archer. Kinda unlucky that I'm fighting her in the morning, but good thing there are trees to cover us from the sunlight. And with that, we have defeated Lydia, the Chaos Archer. By defeating her, we unlock the Chaos Volley. It's gonna be one of the spells I'll be using the entire game. It has a really good damage and also has a damage over time, so it's pretty good. We also unlock a bunch of new structures like the Mimic, I mean the Devourer, I think that's what it's called. It basically eats up your old item, salvaging them and gi giving you some materials. Since I have some money now, I went to the merchant since I needed some merciless version of my items. So I bought some merciless Night Stalker leggings, boots, and gloves since I already have the armor and a merciless axe. So I have a good weapon. I immediately went home and researched the books I bought. Now all I need to do is craft them and hunt the next V-Blood. 
I expanded my castle since I had a bunch of stone blocks already grinded in the grinder. I also built a bunch of new stuff like the devourer chest and something that summons ra rats and a tomb that can summon skeletons as long as I have materials to summon them. So yeah, slowly the castle is looking better and better. And our next V blood is Clive, the fire starter. He was a really annoying opponent to fight. He kept spamming bombs after bombs and he even does the exploding thing which has a very big area of effect. But anyways, we got him and that's all that matters. Since this area was full of sulfur, I decided to mine here before heading home. By defeating Clive, we had access to an alchemy table. We can now make potions and other stuff. So our next target are the Ferocious Bear, Nicholas, and Polora, the Feywalker. Since Polora was kinda close and I didn't really have any equipment upgrade, I just decided to fight her straight up. Honestly, that fight dragged on for so long. She kept summoning some spirits that would heal her. Anyways, we got her. I gathered a bunch of blood roses. I didn't know what they are for currently. But it's always nice to have a stock of materials at home. I think I kind of skipped progression here. But since I could summon the putrid rat, I summoned the putrid rat. And this is the next V blood we're gonna be facing. Sure takes a while. But there it is. And we have defeated the Putrid Rat. What it gives is a skill called a Rat Form. We can change ourselves into a rat. What Rat Form basically does is it helps us do stealthy missions because people are having a hard time looking at where the enemy is because we're a rat. The next V Blood is Nicholas the Fallen. But I decided to farm this cemetery for a bit. Cemetery? Because they had a lot of morning lilies and some grave dust which we really need so we can craft the new ring I've always wanted. So finally we have the chance to make that ring but we have to deal with Nicholas first because I don't want to waste my trip here. The enemies here I swear to god are very annoying. There's There are these necromancer skeleton mages that summon, keeps summoning enemies and I hate it so much. 
And there's also these assassins, under the assassins, that keep like cloaking and stunning you if they ever hit. Very annoying. Anyways, it was time to engage the fight with Nicholas the Fallen. Well, I died. Unfortunate. So I fought him again. I emerge victorious. I had a change of skill. I changed my chaos volley into a blood right so I can explode on the enemies, the mobs, and deal a lot of damage to them. By defeating Nicholas, we have unlocked the paper press and a new skill, which I would not be using, honestly. If you notice, I never really tried a lot of skills in this game. I'm very comfortable with using skills I already have and learned, but I do try them. It's just I'm more comfortable with skills I'm more familiar with. Or skills that feels really relaxing with no complications. So I went to this cave on the far right of the map. It's called the Bear Cave. Because here lies the ferocious bear. And we're gonna fight it. I swear to god I had a very hard time dodging that bear. Anyways, we won and we've unlocked the bear form. With the bear form, we can destroy large rocks or anything that's blocking our way. Like, like example, a uh, big giant gate. So the bear form is pretty useful. So the next V blood is the last one for act 1 of the game. It's Quincy the Bandit King. He is at the bandit stronghold. So he's gonna be our last target. 
But for now, I went home to craft the ring I always wanted. And I'll be choosing the ring of the Dusk Watcher since I'm dealing a lot of physical damage. Also crafted myself a stone coffin so I can sleep majestically inside this stone coffin. Crafted some servant coffin so I can, you know, dominate some servants and make them go fetch me materials instead of myself. Honestly, I didn't really like the slave system in this game because I need to make them items and I feel like I don't really have the time to craft them some gears. But they're really useful since they can go on missions to collect materials instead of yourself. So I'm planning to just give them my old equipment if ever I had some and they can do low level missions in respect to their low level equipment, my hand-me-downs. So I just chose this random rogue assassin as my first slave because why not? So basically when you dominate a human, you won't be able to use your skill and you need to walk them back home. You can't use a portal. Or else they will disappear. So that's what I did. I can't even use my wolf form. I just have to run back home. This would be way easier if we had a horse. But we don't have a horse. And once I'm home, I just need to convert him to a vampire servant. And he can work for us afterwards. I crafted a bunch of new stations at home. An alchemy table and a paper press. I can now make myself some paper and some potions. It's gonna be very helpful. The potions. It's also nice to make some papers so we can unlock some research. The only thing I want from the research is basically potions, armors, or the merciless armors and stuff, and accessories. Not really a fan of decorating my base, but yeah, hopefully we can research those weapons or armors. We also have a leather working station where we can make small backpacks. These are very useful. So we, our inventory won't be crowded with gems, herbs, coins, and uh, papers. If you can see the little bags, those are what I mean. Anyways, it was finally time to raid the bandit king. He hides in the stronghold, but with our bear form, we can destroy it. But I think we can also pass by using the rat form. I see like a very small opening right there. I just didn't really try. <laughs> Anyways, there's a lot of minions here we have to go through before we fight the boss. And so, I raided the stronghold, killing a lot of enemies here. They're mostly the elite versions of the rogue and warriors. They're very annoying. They stun a lot. Especially those guys with the shield and this assassin. But anyways, I think we're done here. And here we have Quincy, the bandit king. Protected by his two weak archer friends.
Zero. <laughs> and with that, we have defeated Quincy, the last boss of Act 1. Defeating him unlocked the smithy and the tailoring bench. We now have access to new types of ores and armor. Also, our first ever ultimate. It's just basically the dash he did, if you noticed in the fight earlier. While I was on my way home, I actually found this rogue that is like... 100% blood quality. That was kind of crazy. So I dominated him. I'm gonna make him a servant. And he's gonna do my bidding for the entirety of the game. <laughs> we still have a long way to go. There's still so many boss we need to defeat. But anyways, the first boss of Act 2 is Beatrice the Tailor. Which would enable us to unlock the loom. Which then makes the material for the new armor set. I assume. The new area has a bunch of new stuff in it, like we have discovered this farm which has cows. I don't really care about the cows, but I'm gonna be taking these as sunflower. I'm not sure what they're used for, but they're gonna be useful eventually. I also found this golden chest with a bunch of goodies. Yay. I can't really take the silver coin as silver damages me. So for now, it'll be just sitting here. Alright, we now have access to horses. We have a way to travel faster now. Riding these horses. Yeah! Look at how fast we go. Oh my god, look at all the auras those humans have. It means their quality of blood is above 90%. That's crazy. So here's the important material we're looking for. It's the cotton. So we can make cotton yarn. After killing Beatrice, of course, because we can't make cotton yarn without the loom. And man, all the cotton burned because one of the farmers burned it. I hate them already. Anyways, I ignored a bunch of uh, enemies. I wanted to go to this haunted iron mine so I can start mining some iron. So we can make a smithy and a tailoring bench. So that was one of my purpose coming here to this new area in a hurry. After mining maybe a lot of iron, it was time to hunt a Beatrice so we can uh, make some cotton yarn with the loom. While mining some iron, I noticed there was a V blood here. And for some reason, her name tag is red, meaning it's danger. Actually, Meredith is way out of our league right now. I don't think we can take care of her. Well, I'm not really good at the game, so I probably can. So as much as possible, I just ignored the danger and continued mining some iron. That is until I had a really great plan. Luring one of the V-Blood, Krieg and Meredith. Since Krieg was undead and Meredith was a human, they're natural enemies. So I'm gonna have them fight each other. And then I'm gonna kill them both. That's the plan. So I just casually mine some iron here while I wait for them to kill each other. For some reason, Krieg is winning against Meredith. Meredith's supposedly stronger than Krieg since he has a higher level than Krieg. Krieg won. Maybe Meredith was just unfortunate that she got hit with that green meteor or something. Anyways, I extracted the V-Blood from Meredith. And the next target is Krieg with a low amount of HP. I should be able to take care of him. His name is just yellow, meaning he's not that far from my level. So this is how I got 2v blood at a higher level than me currently very easily in the iron mines. I was so happy with this. <laughs> Easy v blood. Let's go. As you can see, I skip a couple of progression. We have taken care of Meredith so early. We were not supposed to fight her yet. Anyways, I'm happy with this result. So with a full inventory, I was happily processing everything from ores to bars. And yeah, we can't really do anything with the cotton right now. We need to kill Beatrice ASAP. While waiting for the iron to process, I decided to expand my castle. There was a second floor above this castle. So yeah, I cleaned it up and I will make this my secondary base of operations. Because honestly... My first area or the first floor is getting full. I didn't cover the entire area because currently I have a limit to the amount of floors I can put. But this was enough. I just need the materials to completely finish the walls. 
With my iron ores turned to iron bars, I can now make myself some iron weapons. And it was time to hunt Beatrice after this. Beatrice wasn't really a hard fight. It's just that she's surrounded by these really annoying and strong humans. But I focus on her. And eventually, she succumbed to her death. And we have extracted her blood. Now we can make the loom. Alright, at some point, I made a teleporter in my base. I actually forgot when this happened. I think from doing some random quests on the upper left side, if you notice. I had some quests there. I unlocked the recipe for this. Anyways, yeah, we have the loom. And with the loom, it's time to process all our cotton to cotton yarn. I also made a tailoring station so we can craft the new armor set. I did a bit of decorating and rearranging in the castle since I was waiting for the cotton to turn to cotton yarn. I didn't really have anything to do right now <laughs> and I didn't want to go out. So reorganizing stuff in the base was a good thing to do. So I decided to just craft some parts I could. At the very least, I have some. And I headed out. I needed to gather more cotton as if you guys remember, one of the farmers burned all the cottons we discovered. So I wanted to collect some more. And after gathering some cottons, I decided to fight another V-Blood. This was Christina, the Sun Priestess. She was guarded with two big brutes. So the weapon I'm currently using is a scythe. This was unlocked when we killed Krieg in the iron mine. So yeah, pretty lucky that we actually defeated him early on. We now have a really cool weapon that shoots out the spinning scythe attack. And with that, we have slayed Christina. I went back to base after slaying Christina and crafted the remainder of the Hollow Fang set. We now have a complete set, increasing our HP to 427. I have so much HP now. And with my old gears, I decided to just give it to the servants so I can send them to missions now. And once all my shenanigans were done, it was time to hunt the next V-Blood. This was... Tristan, the vampire hunter, but I'll be the one hunting him. Once he, we kill him, we unlock a recipe for great swords. You can now wield 200 weapons after he dies. And with that, we have slain Tristan, the vampire hunter. Let's go. I really like to hunted sword, so I crafted it as soon as I had it. Look at its wide range of swings. So the next V-Blood is Vincent, the Frostbringer. We're gonna be engaging combat with this icy dude. You're going to have to get through me.
feel a chill coming in. And with that, Vincent died. Next was Bane the Shadow Blade. He was just walking around in his human form, just hiding himself with a cloak. And with that, he died. By killing him, I unlocked the ability to turn into a human so I can go to the human settlement and also a coin purse so we can store some silver there and won't take damage at all. So I kept going and hunting more V-Blood and the next target was Grethel the Glassblower. Honestly, she was pretty strong and tricky to fight but I eventually got used to her attack patterns and I won. Since this area was really abundant of quartz, because basically this is where you farm quartz. So I grabbed all the quartz I could get. By beating Grethel, we have unlocked the recipes for glass and glass bottle. There were still a few more V-Bloods left for Act 2, so there's a lot of stuff we need to do. I now have crafted myself a castle throne. Now I can send my servants to collect materials for me. But since they don't really have any good equipment or items, I can only send them to lower level areas. But that's good enough. I ventured towards the Church of the Dam. This place was honestly full with very annoying undead monsters that summons more undead. I, I really hate undead in this game. You can't even do the finishing bite attack with them. But yeah, we have to beat Leandra, the Shadow Priest, this year. That's why I'm here. And see what I mean by annoying? Look at this. So many spells, so many undead, so many skeletons. I hate them all. But anyways, once I take care of these guys, yeah, boss. So after cleaning up the surrounding minions of Leandra, I initiated the fight. I immediately used my ultimate to surefire the hit. Timing for the sun to rise is horrible, I swear. But anyways, I think we got this. Do you hear them? They're coming. And since there was another V blood close by, I went to fight Maha. The Dark Servant. And <laughs> I just mailed. Power! Oh. 
Give me your life, my minion. Bring. After that, I went to my human form and visited a trader's area where there were a lot of human villagers. I needed to buy a lot of merciless stuff like the hollow fang set and the iron weapons. And currently, I don't really have the silver for this. So I need to farm some silvers so I can buy those books. I'm currently at a spot where my equipments are not strong enough to fight the next V-Bloods. I can't even see them on the V-Blood tracking thingy. So yeah, I'll be raiding a few villages and looting their containers for some gold. I mean silver coins. But for now, I think Terra the Geomancer should be doable. So I initiated the fight with her. The golem is pretty slow so it's kinda easy to kite with the bow until it attacks like that. I'm using blood rage to increase the attack speed of the bow. And as you can see, I can't really see the next V bloods since my item level isn't enough. I really need to unlock the merciless item sets like weapons and armor. So this is where I'm stuck for now. I just gotta farm more silver coins from uh, villages or enemies here. And I did just that, wrecking havoc through villages through villages just to get the silver coins I need. <laughs> Stealing from a lot of houses, expecting more coins from them. It's just hoping that we can buy the Merciless set so we can continue our journey to killing more V-Bloods. Honestly, just went around collecting a bunch of resources everywhere. Scorch stones, quartz, and everything else I might need in hopes that I can also get some coins along the way so I can buy some Merciless gears. A very good place to actually farm materials was Act 2's last boss, Octavia. Uh, these guys have a lot of coins and the chest here as well has a lot of good materials. So I frequent here from time to time just to steal their treasure, I guess. The only merciless weapon I had right now was the Iron Reaper. I don't really use the site that much, so I'm not really familiar with how it works. But hey, let's learn how to use this since it's the only recipe I have for now. The sight range is actually really cool and it throws something like this, which is pretty nice. So I like it. For my new accessory, I made the Pendant of the Night, which would add physical damage and more spell power for me. And after days of farming, I think I already have enough money to buy all the set I need, the armor set. I have 223 coins, I think it's enough. I don't need the boots since I got it from one of the V-Bloods, I believe. So yeah, I have an extra I can spend on something else like maybe an axe or crossbow. Alright, with a completed Merciless Hollow Fang set, I can now target the V-Bloods once more. Jade, the Vampire Hunter, was the next target. Because after defeating her, we'll be able to craft pistols. So we can now have a gun. We can change our crossbow with a gun. I'm excited for this. Oh yeah, if you know this, I also purchased myself a Merciless Iron Slashers. So I made this weapon and it's actually pretty good. I like the movement speed boost from its E ability. And the dash strike is really safe to use and does a lot of damage. So I like this weapon. One shot, one shot. 
You're done. Dance for me. Not. I got a new ultimate from defeating Jade. It's shooting these chaos bolts. A lot of them. It looks pretty cool. I immediately crafted the iron pistols. I was pretty excited to have some guns in the game. Look at this pew pew action. It looks so fun. And there's also this dash ability. Explosive bullet. I like it already. Time to buy the merciless recipe book. I honestly hate turning into a human. Since my movement speed is very slow as heck. But anyways, I need to do this again because I need the merciless recipe. For the next V blood, he's hiding in this monastery place and we need a holy resistant potion, which I have. It is crafted by using some sunflower and a glass filled with water. Being in this place usually exposes you to something called holy radiance, which deals damage over time because of the holy radiation. <laughs> holy radiance. Anyways, with the Holy Resistance Potion, it does nothing to us anymore, which is great. You can now freely explore this area, loot everything, before fighting the V-Blood. After I was finished looting everything I could in this place, it's time to engage with Rajel the Shepherd. And look at the sight damage, it's so good. You just throw the sight and it circles like that. The pistol is also useful, but I hate how stationary I become when I hit with it. But it's good. It just makes me so vulnerable and I hate it. Kneel before the light. Through these battles, I actually received these broken weapons that needs an ancestral forge. But since I don't really use the spear and the greatsword, and also this pistol right here, I decided to just devour it. My main weapon right now would be the sight, the iron slashers, and the pistol. I like them. The next V blood we're targeting resides in these mountains. I believe it's called the Frost Maw. And I swear, this guy is scary as like, I hate fighting him. I could not believe that I could like one try this guy. <laughs> but he has like a really annoying attack where he treases you like that. It's very scary. I can't move, you can't heal, you can't dodge, you can't counter. All you can do is like hope that you don't die while you're frozen. And after I was done with Frostma, it was time to fight Octavian, the militia captain. I really like this laser beam I got from that Pope we killed earlier. It's so strong. It's basically life leech, but I want to I like to use it on the start of a battle. Since they the enemies like pause for 10 seconds to do their introduction poses or something. It's really nice to get them when they're vulnerable. The slashers is so good. I like it. it. Makes me so fast. 
Look, he's already half health. I'm so strong right now. <laughs> I just run away each time I have the opportunity. I just hit him with my Chaos Bolt. This is basically my strategy for the entire game now. Just hide like this, attack when I can, Q when it's available, and Chaos Bolt or Volley. And with Octavian defeated, we have now unlocked another ultimate, also another new armor set we can craft. But it will require a lot of uh, high level materials from Gloomroot, which is our next destination. In order to improve my weapons and armor, I'll require to beat the new bosses. Because they have the recipes for stuff like silk, radium alloy, and other stuff we might need. So we're going to be facing the new bosses with our current gears, which should be fine, I think. And look at these guys. The enemies now look so strong and threatening with their lightning bolts, their flamethrowers. They just look overall very strong, you know. It's, it's kind of scary facing them. But with our new ultimate and our iron slashers, we can actually just run away, hit and run away, and repeat the process until they die. It's kind of fine, I guess. <laughs> but I still hate this flamethrower guy. There are also something like mutants here. Look at this mutant gremlins. These rat hovers. <laughs> They're actually rats. I just noticed. But anyways, yeah. They are enemies with the humans here. They look really high tech with their cool looking shield and all. And their guns that shoot lightning. So yeah, this is such a dangerous place, but we got this. We're strong enough, I believe. And we're skilled enough to survive. For now, I decided to visit the Cursed Forest. Because I would need the silk to make uh, the new armor set. And I would appreciate a new armor set before fighting all the new bosses. So since we're going to be fighting the boss that gives the silk recipe, I'm going to prioritize him. But first, we have a problem in this area. It's called Curse of the Forest. And with this curse, it makes the map, not the map, but us blind. We can't use the minimap or the full map because it'll be covered with fog. So we need to kill someone called the Wanderer first. So he's going to be the first V-Blood we kill in this new area. After killing him, he'll give us a recipe to make a cape that would remove the curse of the forest. Here he is, the old Wanderer. He's very annoying because he runs around summoning random things at us. Also, there are a lot of mysterious creatures in this forest that just attack you, like that thing right there. That, that dark shadowy thing. It's very annoying. And his, you know, the Wanderer spell basically binds you in a spot while he runs around, I guess, luring all other creatures towards us. I hate this guy. So it's, it's, I'm very happy to destroy him like this kind of fast. He's honestly one of the, unmo one of the annoying enemies to fight. Because as we try to pursue him, the curse keeps progressing and progressing, making us unable to see the map. The only way we can see or go towards a way gate is if we had placed a marker beforehand, which I did not do. So I got lost after beating him. <laughs> Are you jealous of my curse? You can have it! <laughs> And with that, the old guy is dead. Look at this guy. This is the Night Lander. Forgot. Night Stalker. Forgot the name of this thing. But anyways, he's very scary looking and strong. Upon returning home, I actually unlocked a bunch of new recipes. I totally forgot about this. After I killed Frostmaw, we unlocked the medium bags, which are very useful now. We have extra slots in our inventory. Now we have the Shroud of the Forest. We can freely explore the Cursed Forest without worrying about the curse covering our map with fog. Alright, it's time to explore the Spider Cave and look for some silkworms. So I can make some silk and then the new armor set. These spiders are really annoying, I swear. They're, they're pretty tanky. It actually it takes a while for me to kill them. But 
Well, we got this. Let's be positive. There's also this spider mummy that has a lot of eggs on her back. It's really, you know, you know that, I don't know, you know that picture in the internet where there's like a lot of uh, ticks on dogs. It looks like that. Anyway, it carries a lot of silkworms. It's pretty good. All right, it's time to fight Ongora, the spider queen. And once we kill her, we'll have a recipe for silk and we're one step closer to getting our new armor set. I swear to god, the sickle is so nice. Especially the invisibility. And she's down. Let's go. I then killed some uh, random wolves in a cursed forest as I need their hide to make a pristine leather combined with the grease from Gloom Root. And we can finally make the armor. The monsters here are really tough, but no matter. We're, we're, we're kind of strong too. The only thing left now is to hunt more grease so we can make the pristine leathers. And the mutant grease usually comes from these mutants. While on the hunt, I stumbled on this factory looking area, which had like this person riding a machine with a giant laser on top of it. I don't know what it is. But anyways, everything here looks really dangerous. Really dangerous. Look at, look at those threats trying to like kill me. But yeah, with our sickle, everything feels so safe. We can always just run away if ever something goes wrong. And my Q is honestly one of the best thing I can have. It's very safe to use and deals a lot of damage, as you can see there. It's just that our normal attack on the sickle is so so bad. <laughs> anyway, it's better than nothing. Just love the utility on this thing. Although I don't have the armor set yet, as the resources are still processing, I decided to fight Ziva the engineer. I feel like I could take her on. But we'll see. As long as I maintain distance, I don't get burned from her flamethrower. I think I'm safe. Up again. 
And Ziva is down. We have unlocked a bunch of new stuff like the glass canister and radium alloy. Also a new structure. Fabricator. I made the fabricator at base and honestly it was huge. At the very least, we can now make some empty canisters. Once I collected some radium alloy, I can finally make these broken pieces into a whole piece. The ancestral forge. But it does require a lot of stuff. For the entire run or for the entire game, I never receive anything that's for iron sickles. And I hate it. It's my main weapon right now. And after waiting for a while, I finally have the Dawn Thorn set. Yeah. Reaching gear level 66. The next target was Domina, the Blade Dancer. She was pretty annoying to fight actually since she runs around with lightning and also sprays a lot of lightning that can definitely kill me in one go. But yeah, I took care of her. safe word is subscribe. I crafted a bunch of empty canister and I filled it with sludge. We'll be using this to make a lot of radium alloys later. Alright, for the next V-Blood, we have Angram, the Purifier. He purifies, but his attack is chaos. Weird. I think my iron sickle skew is bad for this guy. <laughs> Cause when I go back and he has a shield in the opposite direction, he just bounces back and explodes. Everything. 
yes, 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 yes. Oh, don't die, don't die, please don't die. Don't die, don't die. Woo! And we defeated Angram. I then upgraded my castle heart to level 4. And now I have the ability called Dominate Mount. I can now dominate horses and can call them anytime. The dominated horse. And that's pretty good, guys. I swear to God, managing horses is really annoying. Like, if you die or just leave it somewhere and then you just go home and forget about it. At the very least, with this skill, I can now recall the horse wherever I want. So I went to the horse racing track since there were a bunch of horses there for display. So I can just choose a horse that has the best max speed out of all of them. And I choose this horse. He had a max speed of more than 10, which was really good. Check this out. It's really fast. But the acceleration though is kind of bad. But anyways, his max speed is really high. Just the acceleration is the problem. I then forge a ominous grand sickle. So I have an improvement on my sickle. I swear to god, I really want a better version of my iron sickle right now. But I just can't find one from the bosses. I hate it. Time for the next V-Blood. It's Duke of Balaton. The Duke of Balaton, I mean. It's a giant frog. <laughs> and kind of annoying to fight because he summons like other frogs, which is a pain in the butt. And we got him. Next, I enter this area called the Ancient Village where Foul Rot the Soul Taker resides. I needed to farm these crystals as well as they contain, uh, what you call it? Ghost Crystal, which you can then convert to Spectral Dust with some Sulfur, I think? I, for I don't remember. But anyways, we'll get Spectral Dust using these uh, Ghost Crystals. Destroyed a lot of them, destroyed a bunch of banshees as well, and other ghosts that resides in this village before fighting Fallrout. Fallrout. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anyways, Mr. Fallrout was just chilling here. It's time to kill him. This attack looks pretty simple, right? But it actually is. Right now. Take the 
Come with me to hell! Edge. So my bad, there's actually Scorch Stone and Ghost Crystals to make the Spectral Dust. So yeah, I process it immediately as I will be needing it in the future to upgrade my weapons and a new armor set, I think. Next, I went to this place called Graceful Village, which had a lot of werewolves. And honestly, these werewolves are tanky as heck. It's actually very hard to deal to deal with it one by one. Imagine if there was a mob of them. Anyways, it's not as tough as the bosses, so we easily won. But still, they're, they're very tough. So I went and massacred every werewolf in the village so we can fight the boss alone one-on-one. -on -one, I hope. <laughs> Unless he summons more minions. So yeah, that's the goal right now. Just to kill everything here so we can one-on-one -on -one the boss after this these fights. And here he is, Wilfred, the werewolf chief. Let's kill him. And he's so hungry. I swear to god, the Iron Slasher's hide ability is so OP. They just make the enemies like, oh, oh, where is he? It's like they get stunned for a very long while. Just looking for me wherever I am. Oh my god, these villagers are annoying. He's gonna be eating them to feed on them. And he's dead. And I didn't stop there. I went ahead and fought Cyril the Curse Myth. Cyril? How do you pronounce this? Cyril. Cyril. I swear to god, my Iron Sickle right now does almost no damage. It's so cute. It's only my Chaos Volley that does a lot of damage to this boss right now.
over with me. Just a bit. Hey, this guy was the last one for Act 2. It was now time for Act 3. And the very first boss we'll need to find, I mean fight, for Act 3 is Sir Magus. This guy is guarding an area that hides the silver ores. I'm honestly pretty excited for the silver ore items. I mean dark silver. <laughs> Look at this. Look at all the upgrades. Level 23 weapons. I'm gonna go for the slasher, the very first 